Okay, so in today's video, we're gonna talk about how to get effortless speed with the driver. And in particular, how we get into this sort of iconic post-impact position where we stay back behind the golf ball, fully releasing that club through for maximum distance, but also the same level of control that we see with great golfers. To do that, there's a few things that we need to understand, and the best way to look at those things is by using gear. So let's take a look at a professional golf swing and start to understand some of the key movements that are gonna help us get into these types of positions. Okay, so taking a look at gear, there's two things that I'm gonna reference in this particular part. So the first one is from this face-on perspective, we can kind of see here how much the pelvis is shifting towards that lead side. That's a really critical thing that will come to light as this video carries on. Also, if I'm just gonna flip this and take a look at the target perspective, we can also see the way that we maintain that hip depth. So you can see if I sort of draw this little tush line in here, the way that nobody's encroaching closer towards the ball and is maintaining the depth. And those are two really important movements to be able to demonstrate that iconic picture that I was also referring to earlier. So how do we put that together? How do we create effortless speed? Well, let's get stuck into that. So first things first, effortless speed is gonna come from the relationship of the lead arm. And what we wanna do is once we've taken our backswing position, what we really wanna be doing is as we start that downswing is getting the feeling as, as I highlighted on the gears video of shifting that pelvis towards that lead side. And as you're doing that, you wanna do it in a rotational manner. So you can see that not only am I just shifting to the lead side, not only am I just rotating, I'm really rotating in towards that lead leg and I'm progressively shifting pressure in towards that front leg like so. Now as I'm doing this, as I've talked about before on the channel, you can see the way that the rotation of my body moves my lead shoulder and by doing that, that brings my arms down. So what this does is this is helping if you like store up energy. It's not like I'm bringing my arms down as I move to the left. I'm trying to keep these up in the air, storing energy into this type of position. That's got to be the first thing. You've got to store up energy and start that downswing with full of intent of moving towards that lead side. So once we've got that weight on towards that lead side and we've started that downswing, loading up that pressure. Now what we just need to do is we need to understand how we're gonna deliver this energy source here to the back of the golf ball. And there's a couple of things that we need to do. The first one is that we need to make sure that you understand the importance of hip depth. Now this just basically means if I was swinging towards you guys here and if I draw a line on the back of my hips, you can see as I'm moving towards that lead side, as I come in towards this delivery position, see the way my lead hip still stays back on this line. So at no stage am I sort of moving forward. Now, the reason why that motion is very important is because by keeping my lead hip back on the touch line, it tilts the pelvis. And what starts to happen is when we start to do things like tilt the pelvis, like so, so the pelvis becomes more tilted, instead of if I move forward, we end up more like so, then it helps me do things like drop the shoulder down. So this is gonna really help you out in terms of controlling those angles coming into the delivery position, particularly when you're trying to use driver. So what we don't wanna be doing is kind of firing ourselves this way, you know, getting in towards this, this delivery position and then sort of standing up like so. You need to understand the importance of retaining that hip depth because it really helps you stay, should we say, down, keeping these angles into the back of the ball. Now, once you start to do that, then what you need to be doing is getting this feeling of extension. So it's not necessarily so much a case if we get into this delivery position and it's just lead hit back and I'm staying downward, that's not true. It's very much the importance of unweighting that lead leg. So it's that feeling of getting up and triggering an extensional motion. So you can see the way I'm really getting more up and through the golf ball like so, whilst maintaining that hip depth. And by doing that, it's gonna give you this ability to look like so. Now, so many amateur golfers end up sort of chasing it with the head and end up holding off that release and looking like this. That's not what we wanna be doing. So in terms of like today's video is how do you do this? then this is exactly what needs to happen. These are the sequence of events that you need to understand. Loading up that power, and then understanding not only the importance of keeping that hit back, but getting the feeling of getting more up and through the ball, and that's gonna really help you deliver this post-impact position, which much more and more like this. Okay, so the question you should have now is how do you put that together in a practical sense? Well, that's why I really like this drill. This is just a simple rope drill. Now, what you're gonna be concentrating on when you use the rope drill is you're gonna be thinking about where you're directing that rope. So you can see if I was swinging towards you guys here, it's more of that feeling of, see the way I'm really directing that rope up and behind me, and that's helping me 
whip the club through. Now, if you're somebody who kind of moves this way, you're gonna sort of notice the way the rope goes around towards that lead side. And what we're trying to do is direct that rope behind me. So a great analogy for this is to kind of imagine if I had a basketball here and the hoop is behind me or to the right of me, then I want to try and get the feeling that as I'm triggering this extension, I'm throwing the basketball into the hoop behind me. It's exactly the same with this rope exercise, like so. See the way I'm triggering that extension, I'm not moving this way, I'm getting nicely up and through the golf ball. And that's definitely a worthwhile drill. Now, if you want to do that drill in a little bit more detail, I'd strongly suggest watching this video here because I really dissect the importance of how to do the rope drill correctly. But hopefully for now, you've enjoyed that video. I'll see you guys again really, really soon.